I'm Jason with Florida Best Quote. Um, and I just wanted to, it's always, well, I just enjoy getting to see everyone every uh, when we get to come on here every Friday uh, or the first Friday of the month. It is hard to believe it's June. I know a lot of us are going to be going on vacation. I'll be heading out here in the next uh, about seven days from now. But um, I know there's a lot on everyone's mind, and I, I want to make sure we leave some time for questions as well. Um, I know condo reform has been something we've talked about uh, recently. Uh, we've talked a little bit about hurricane season. Uh, I know I think last month we talked a little bit about how there are more options now for solar panels, which has been something that's been, um, I think, on a lot of people's minds. It's been, it's been a headache for us for years. Uh, and probably a headache for some of y'all as well, trying to get those covered, or can you even write the policy? And, and the good news on that, as we had talked about last month, was that there are some options that have come through on that. Um, but I think the big thing right now is related to hurricane season, and, and I want to touch on a couple of things. Um, some of this, some of you might know, uh, but I want to just uh, make sure that we're um, all on the same page. And the big thing, and just to kind of emphasize this uh and some of you might have heard this before, but I think the big thing right now is just make sure that uh, we want to emphasize, if you're on the listing side, we want to emphasize pre-listing inspections. Make sure uh, that everything is taken care of and repaired before the, the property gets listed. That is best case scenario. I know it's not always something that can be done. Sellers can give pushback on that, but that really comes down to the realtors, I think, trying to uh, and encourage that. Um, the reason for that is, is that, um, you know, there's not as many options down the road trying to get repairs done after closing like there used to be on the buyer side. So we're really putting a strong emphasis on getting those done at the beginning. And then you have a house that's, you know, when you list it, it's going to pass the four point because it already did. Right. So I want to put a strong emphasis on that, especially this time of year. Uh, when we're with hurricane season, where we sometimes have to buy policies immediately, if possible, we don't want to be waiting on repairs to be made. So that'd be the first thing. Second thing is get the inspections done uh, at the very beginning. As soon as the contract, you go under contract, the first thing, order the inspections so that those are done at the very beginning. Um, and we have those with the client's name on them because a lot of companies have issues with that. Uh, the four point has to be in the client's name. Wind mitigation kind of goes back and forth, but it's always best to have, you know, some companies make an issue of it, some don't, um, as far as it being in the client's name. Um, so get the inspections done at the very, very beginning. And then from there, I think the main thing is uh, we just need realtors and the mortgage companies. We just need y'all to make sure that uh, whoever's referring the client to us, make sure that we have the client's contact information at the very beginning so that we can reach out to them and get all the information up front. And all this is being done so that we can get a quote, but also that we can have a completed application. That's really the main thing. You know, things like date of birth, social security number. Do they have a dog? What breed is it, right? You know, have they had claims in the past? Things that, <clears throat> excuse me, things that could impact insurance that a lot of times we don't get on the front end. Um, as, as you know, you know, and some of y'all have done this, and it's really not a huge issue until hurricane season. A lot of times we're, I would say most, if not half the time, we are just, a lot of realtors hand us an address and say, hey, can you run a quick quote for me on this? And then we run with that, and but then we don't hear anything until our mortgage friends at Van Dyke send us a request to buy the policy, and that's the first time we've seen the client's name, right, or the buyer's name. Um, when we're not in a rush, it's no big deal. But during hurricane season, we just can't do it that way. I, or at least I would encourage us not to do it that way. So just a quick recap. If we, during hurricane season, pre-listing inspections, I, I would say are a big priority all the time, but especially at the beginning. So you know you're going into the transaction without repairs being needed. Second, get the inspections done as quickly as possible on the front end. That way... You're not, we're not waiting around on inspections in order to buy into policy. And then thirdly, we wanna make sure we are, we as insurance agents are in touch with the clients, the buyers at the very beginning. I mean, right when they go under contract, you know, home insurance, honestly, and flood insurance, that should be part of the due diligence period, it should be at the very beginning. And then we can call them, we can, or they can call us. 
We get all their information, everything. We have everything we need. And then when a hurricane comes, potentially, and all the companies start closing up for business and we need to bind by 5 p.m. and then that's it. We're not trying to find personal information on the clients because we already have it. So I really wanted to reemphasize that today. I think I'd mentioned that in the past. Uh, any questions about that? Kind of how we, this is just the best way for us to partner together during hurricane season. So when a binding restriction comes into play from the, from the insurance companies and they all start shutting down by 5 p.m. today, everybody's shutting down. We have everything we need to just go ahead and hit a bind button so that that policy is bound. And I'm not on the phone at 4.30 trying to call somebody at work because I don't have their date of birth. So we don't want to run into that. So any questions about how that works and how we can kind of partner together uh, at this time of year? I apologize if I didn't hear you correctly. Were you saying having a pet determines affects your insurance? It can, depending on the breed. So if there's certain, uh, you know, pit bulls, Dobermans, there's certain breeds that are just on a list and all the home insurance companies some of them make a big deal about it. Some of them, uh, it affects whether you have any liability if a pet would bite somebody. And then some companies just won't, you just can't have certain breeds. They will not write a home insurance policy if you have a certain breed of dog. So that's just one mm -hmm. of those things that we always ask up front. Hey, do you have any dogs? What breed is the dog? And uh, we ask that specifically so that we wouldn't quote with a policy that doesn't allow it. So that's, it. as you can imagine, you know, if all we are doing is quoting an address and we quote that address and then we find out last minute they've got a pit bull and that company we quoted them with doesn't allow them, we have to turn back around and find another quote. So that's just one little reason why we try to get all this inf information at the very, very beginning of the process so that we don't have any hiccups afterwards. So, yes, that's, that's a good question. But, yes, that can be an issue. Hey Jason, um, do 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 most home inspectors are they good with switching um, a home in, the name on the home inspection from like the seller to the buyer, or if it was for a previous buyer to another buyer? Are most home inspectors good with doing that? I've heard of one that might do it, but I mean we they're supposed to have new inspections. I mean that's kind of the deal, right? So we always try, you know it needs to be an inspection that's ordered through the contract period, not. You know, the, the pre-listing inspection is done, if that's what you're talking about specifically, that's done by the seller so that it can be done, um, you know, so you know that there's if there's any issues or not. The, the inspections we're requiring and we're looking for are the ones that are done once the home gets under contract. So there's really no other option. If it's some inspection they did a month ago or something like that, most inspectors, I would say, are not going to be okay with that. Uh, and plus, we're, that's just, you know, it, it's the normal part of the process is once you go into contract, get the inspections done, they're going to be under the buyer's name. Is there an age that, like, so I have a buyer that is, tr I, uh, is trying to use the home inspection that was done for the seller. It was done a couple months ago. Is there an, uh, a, like an age limit um, that, like if the four points over 60 days old or 90 days old that you wouldn't be able to use it? Or well, it? Four, point, four point inspections usually are okay for a year, but that's when the same person is trying to get insurance on their own home, right? Like if they're trying to switch insurance, hey, the insurance companies will take an inspection that's within a year for that current buyer or that current owner, right? They own the home, they're switching policies, that's a year. But for a, a brand new home buyer, um, it's got to, those inspections have to be in the buyer's, the, the four points specifically has to be in the buyer's name. So then you're putting it on the inspector to say that, okay, this house that's a year old or two months old or three months old, nothing's happened in the last few months. So yeah, I'll just change the name. That puts a lot on them and most of them are not going to be okay with that. So they're going to be wanting to do the inspections themselves and put it and have it under the contract time uh, under the buyer's name. So uh, the age of how, how old they are really is only, if someone is switching companies, the insurance company is okay with an older one, but it's still gotta be under the buyer's name or the, the owner's name. Gotcha. Okay, well, yeah, thanks. Yeah, my, my buyer, he got uh, the, the seller sent over their, their homeowner's insurance quote 
uh, four point wind mitt, termite, well water test. They sent over all that. I was using the homeowner's insurance quote for the payment for the buyer. Um, mm -hmm. And I looked at it too quick. And the quote was from 2017 to 2018. Whoa. So the, pre so the premium went from $1,100 a year to $4,200 a year. Oh, dang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, those, and quotes are usually only good for like a month. So just, yeah. just be aware of that. And, and it, there are companies that at the first of the month, they update their rates. Right. It's just kind of something that happened. Now, some of them make announcements. Hey, we are having a company wide 2.5 percent rate increase beginning this date. But a lot of times we'll just see increases at the beginning of the month, you know, or rate adjustments at the beginning of the month. The rates might go down a little bit. They might go up a little bit. It doesn't happen all the time, but I have seen it enough to where I, I bring it up sometimes. So uh, but generally, once we run a quote after a month, it's not going to be any good. We have to run it again. So just be aware of that. So five years is a little too old. Just yeah. maybe a hair. Well, I think it's longer. It's more like six years on that one, right? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, 2017 to 2018. Yeah, that's right. Six years. <laughs> hey, you're a mortgage guy. You're supposed to know your math now. Come on. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. I'm just yeah, giving you a hard time. Yeah, I emailed you guys. I was like, hey, this quote was from UPC from like uh, a while ago. I was like, uh, oh, can yeah. you guys still write through them? They're like, no, you can't even write through them anymore. I'm like, oh, oh yeah, awesome. the, co the company that basically went bankrupt? No, we can't do that anymore. They're gone. <laughs> um, any other questions about just that general area of how we can best partner together and, and any questions related to that? Yeah, yeah, Jason, I have one. Um, so what if a seller is not willing to do the, the pre-inspection right? Uh, how can we help our listing agents? Do you have like a cheat sheet of some of like the electric panels or like certain known like triggers that they might be able to like help look for if the seller is not willing to do that pre-listing? Do you have a cheat sheet of some sort that might be helpful? Um. We could probably, I mean, I can give you two things right now that yeah. the, the one thing we don't want to do is we don't want to put you in a situation or the seller or the realtor. We don't want to put anybody in, in a situation where they're trying to be the inspector, right? Like I, they're making the determination about, well, that AC doesn't look too bad or that, you know, it looks okay. Um, so the two things I would say, let me see, maybe three. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we could always send this information out with this, <clears throat> this would just be a generic thing. So whenever I tell a realtor, I, I do some, I do things like, um, and if you're a realtor, I, follow me and I would encourage you to come to some of these. One thing that I do usually every month or every other month is I partner with another, uh, inspection company called rock solid inspections. They're one of maybe three companies that I refer people to. There's not a lot out there that I'd really trust. But um, so what we do is we go into a listing, a new listing. We partner with the realtor that has the listing and we walk through a four point inspection. We go, here, we walk over to the electrical panel. Let's see if this electrical panel is okay. And the inspector will go over that. And, and then we'll do that with the plumbing and everything else. And I think it's such a huge thing. I wish more realtors would get involved in those things because a lot of the inspection companies are doing that sort of thing. But I would say whenever I tell those realtors, when you first walk up to that new listing and you're trying to make a decision about, you know, is everything OK in this house? Really, there's two main things you should do, my opinion. Right. And you can do this and not have to feel like I've got to be an inspector or anything like that. But you go to the electrical panel. That's first. And you're going to check the brand and you're going to check to see if it's a brand that's on that's a potentially problematic brand. So. For electrical panels, that would be Federal, Federal Pacific, Zensco, uh, Sylvania, uh, Challenger. Those would be your four top ones. If you see those names, you know insurance is going to be an issue, and most likely they're uninsurable. Three of those brands are considered fire hazards. One of them, Challenger, is basically an obsolete brand. There's no parts for them. So... Those four brands, I always encourage people, Those, if you've got that, they need to be replaced up front. Just tell the seller they've got to replace them because they're considered fire hazards, three out of four, right? Um, sometimes that gets wiped off. Sometimes they're just so old, you know, 40 years old or whatever. And sometimes there's no sticker 
with the brand name or sometimes it's it's been torn off or written over or whatever. In those cases, uh, one kind of rule of thumb is look at the breakers. If they're red, blue, and green, that's automatically telling you it's a Zensco panel and it's a fire hazard. Red, blue, green. Okay. So that's what I would say about the electric panel. You can do that on your own. Number two, go to the hot water heater or the water heater and find out how old it is. If it's 15 years or older, it needs to be replaced. Almost every single home insurance company out there will not write, write a water heater that's over, that's 15 years or older. Their useful life is anywhere from 10 to 12 years is what most inspectors would say. So go to the water heater. Most of them will have a manufacture date on there and that'll tell you. Now, if they don't have the manufacture date, here's something you wanna write down. I might've given this out before. This is one of those websites I just, you, you have to have if you're on the listing side at all, but it is a website that where you can look at the serial number and you can tell through this website where the age is. Sometimes it's the age is embedded in the first two numbers of the serial number. Sometimes it's the third and fourth number. And sometimes it's coded in there. Like if it's five, that is for the month. So that would be May, you know, things like that. So you have to know the brand. All you have to know is the brand and then look at the website and you can tell how old it is yourself. That's one of those things that if you can tell the seller that up front, hey, your hot water heater is 20 years old, it's got to be replaced. So I would say those two things, electrical panel and water heater. The website, if you want to write it down or type it down, yeah. it's a it's a building, spelled out, building-center.org, building-center.org. It is a, I give that website out all the time. You can use the serial number to find out the age of the water heater, and you can use the serial number to find out the age of the AC through that website. And uh, it's inv I it's invaluable on the uh, on the seller side for you as a listing agent to know that. Jason, uh, can you just repeat real quick? We have uh, on the electrical panels Federal Pacific, Challenger, Zenco. What was the other ones that I'm missing here? Uh, Zensco and then Sylvania. Sylvania. Okay. All right. Perfect. Yeah, those are those are the four main ones. If you see, uh, if you see something like stab lock, that means it's so old that I mean it should have already been replaced a long time ago. But those those are the four that need to be thought of first. So those would be the two things that on, on the in, on the listing side when you walk into a house that you're thinking about listing. And they're going to give you a heart that, you know, I don't want to do a pre-listing inspection or whatever. And, and, and these are not common. Most don't do pre-listing inspections, right? But try to get them to do it. If they don't, at least be able to know if the electrical panel's got to be replaced or if the water heater is 15 years or older. Those two things are really, really important. Um, hey, Jason. Jason, yeah. for that, for that, for that brand, for those brands of the electrical panel, what would be the ages of those homes about? Like, when were those like you know common? Was that like the forties, the thirties, fifties? Probably not. The I mean, I don't know if they go back as far as the forties. Maybe sixties to 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 eighties. I think are probably the most common. Um, I've seen now the Zensco. I've seen that in um, definitely a lot in the 80s. That's probably uh, where I've seen that the most, maybe up to the early 90s. I think Challenger was in the 90s. Um, but once you get back to the 60s, I don't know if you're going to see those. You, but I think if you've got an electrical panel that was made was in the 60s, it probably needs to be replaced regardless of what brand you see. What's the rule of thumb on like on electrical panel? Like if your house is over 40 years old, 30 years old, I'm like, is there a rule of thumb like there is for a roof at an AC? Not as much. Um, electrical panels, you know, I, I think a lot of the companies are going to look at maybe 40 years. There might be some that would go, well, I don't want to say 50. I think it needs to be replaced if they're 50 years old, regardless. But maybe 30 to 40 years old, something like that. Uh, you'll see that a lot. But if if the electrician, there are companies, if the electrician signs off on it, it can be older and the the insurance companies will take it. It might be 40 to 50 years old. If it's a, if it's a good brand and the electrician says it's fine, a lot of the companies are not as big on the age of the electrical panel as much as they are on some of the other facets of the home. So uh, brand has always been a bigger emphasis to us than the age of the electrical panel. 
Thank you. Jason, you shared the ones that aren't good brands. Do you have any brands that stand out that are really good when it comes to electrical panels? Um, Square D is probably the most common one we see now. And and it's kind of funny. They they did have, I mean, you'll see them across the board and there's they have tons of models. Uh, there was one model that got recalled a year or two ago, I think, maybe maybe two or three years ago. So um, other than that one model, Square D is a great brand. And I'm not sure what that model is. The electrician would have to, to sign off on that uh, if they're even aware of that recall. So, uh, but Square D um, has been the one that we see they have the majority of the market when new uh, when new ones are put in, that's what you're going to see. So I would say square D. Thank you. Question in the chat. It said for the water heater age, they asked, does that, um, does that include a tankless water heater? No tankless. A lot of the companies right now and, and tankless haven't been around for too, too long. I, I don't, I mean, 20, 30 years at the most, I don't know the exact age of how long they've been around, but most of the tankless water heaters as of right now are just accepted. There's not, uh, there hasn't been a, a year put on those um, per se. So tankless water heaters are fine because they're not considered the same hazard. They're not storing water that can flood your house. So. Thank you. Sure. And somebody said the uh, inspection company, the one I mentioned is rock solid. I'll go ahead and give you, I mean, there might be others, but the three main inspection companies that I recommend, and this is just me, uh, you know, over the last uh, 11 years, I think there's three companies that I, I kind of, hold, you know, hang my hat on. Rock Solid is one of them. Uh, Rock Solid Home Inspections, uh, SEC, like S-E-C uh, Inspections, and, uh, and then FBI, Florida Building Inspections. So those are three good companies. I know the owners and and I know the uh, some of the inspectors and I trust them. It doesn't mean they're perfect. Doesn't mean they'll never make a mistake. But I at least know that those three uh, companies they at least know what they're doing and they know what the inspection should and shouldn't have on them because that's what we run into a lot of times is just people leaving stuff off of a four point or they don't or they include too much. They're still inspectors. There's just a lot of inexperienced inspectors out there. And they'll, some of them will treat the four-point inspection like a full home inspection. They'll go into the notes and just start listing stuff. And I'm like, that is not supposed to be on the four-point inspection. So at least these three companies I trust. And I know that they know what they're doing. They've been trained. And they know what should and shouldn't be on there. That's what's most important to me. And they do a good job. So, uh, again, it, I, they might make a little mistake here and there. But it's just an oversight, not because they don't know what they're doing. We're super grateful, Jason, for you and your time and your knowledge. So thank you for being here with us. Uh, Always a pleasure. Morning.